In a village named Shamnagar, there lived three best friends, Sudha, Sheila, and Meera. They all studied together in a school. They all were best friends. Sudha and Sheila were extremely rich friends. Sudha was a carefree and cool girl, and Sheila was extremely stingy. Whereas Meera was from a poor family, Sheila and Sudha never made Meera feel that she was poor. Now all three of them were adults. Once they completed their graduation, they were pursuing their prospective careers. Like this, days passed. One day, when Meera was getting ready to go back to work, when she got a call from Sheila, then Meera. Hey, hi, Sheila. How are you? You called me after such a long time. Are you done with your breakfast? How did you know that I was having my breakfast? Your home cooked breakfast is wonderful, and it's our life. What an aroma! Wow, super! It's amazing. Yes, you only talk and never show up. You only invite people to your house. This is not done. Wait, I'm going to call Sudha right now. Sudha picks up the call. Hi guys, what's going on? It seems that Queen has just woken up. The party actually continued into the wee hours of last night, which is why I just got up. Now, how will this girl remember us if she attends so many parties? No, no, you both are my best friends, and my life would be so boring without you guys. At this point, everyone begins to chuckle. And Sudha continues, Meera, we haven't eaten any of your meals you made in so long. Therefore, we will only meet this time at your home. Yes, that is why we called you. After the seven days had ended, Sheila and Sudha visit Meera's home. Sheila and Sudha were horrified to see there were two police officers guarding Meera's home. But neither of them approached Meera to inquire further. They now sat down and gave each other hugs. Before talking, Meera, will you keep talking, or will you even bring something to eat? Yes, yes, I'm bringing it. I have been making your preferred breakfast since morning. What are you waiting for? Bring it right away. While enjoying their breakfast together, Meera, Sheila, and Sudha decide to take a trip. At that point, Sudha said, "Let's plan something different." Let's go for a trip at this time. How's the idea? Oh no, no! If we travel, a lot of money will be spent, and you are aware of how much I hate spending money on unnecessary things. You haven't changed a bit, you miser. Sheila and Meera burst out laughing as Sudha said this. When Sheila further said, "Okay, okay, fine. Okay then, let's go for shopping." The group quickly gathers at Sudha's place on the second day. After which, they go on an extensive shopping spree. Sudha was carelessly wasting money while shopping, and Sheila noticed her. Sudha, please cut back on your spending. You were paying the same price as the merchant. Are you aware that I just saved your three thousand rupees today? And why did you feel the need to carry around so much cash? When will you get better? I don't know. What did you actually save my three thousand rupees today? If we work, we should value money as well. If you have a card, why do you need to carry so much cash? Sheila, don't start now. I know that you're stingy, and I am not. As the three friends were talking, suddenly a bike came from behind and quickly snatched away Sudha's purse. Sudha started screaming loudly, "Oh no, not my purse! Once I get you in my hands, then you will see. See? See? Didn't I tell you?" On the other side, Meera called someone, and the cops arrive in no time, handing Sudha's purse to Meera. As much as we searched for this criminal for a long time, madam, we only managed to catch him today thanks to the awareness. As he said this, the officers gave Meera a salute. Seeing this, Sudha and Sheila were astounded. Meera, you are yes, I am the PSI of the city. Now Sudha and Sheila also salute Meera, and they go home together and have a lot of fun. They start meeting each other. A long time ago, in one of the kingdoms, there reigned a great and mighty king named Richard. 
King Richard was a tyrant and a braggart. King Richard had a daughter whose name was Elizabeth. His daughter made him proud. Just like a member of the royal family, Princess Elizabeth had a birthmark. In addition to being quite attractive, Elizabeth had a very generous heart. She was always willing to lend a hand. One day, King Richard told her, My royal princess, I'll marry you off to a member of royal family very soon and you'll rule that kingdom as its queen. You'll make me proud of you as your father if you do it. But Papa, I don't want to get married. Princess Elizabeth went to her room after saying this. In her kingdom, Elizabeth had a crush on a commoner named Aidan. Aidan was incredibly impoverished, but he was a good man and Princess Elizabeth adored him as a result. Elizabeth went to meet Aidan by concealing from all eyes after hearing her father and she spoke to him. Aidan, let's get married. Otherwise, my father will arrange for my marriage. Well, but then your father will murder us if he finds out about us. And so what? We shall then die together. Princess Elizabeth eventually marries Aidan and the king learns of it. In a fit of wrath, the king declares, My very own daughter betrayed me. Soldiers, grab hold of them and drag them directly in front of me. All right, Your Majesty. Aidan and the princess are arrested by the troops, who then bring them to the king. The king gives the order to put them both in the prison. After seeing both of them, one day, Princess Elizabeth said, All of the diamond rings are yours to keep, but only if you can help me in my escape from this jail. Princess, the king will murder me. If he finds out about this, I will be executed. The guard exactly knew how precious the princess ring was and that's why he showed them a secret path to escape. He helped the princess and Aidan in their escape. The following day, King Richard became furious upon hearing that they had fled and he raged as he uttered, Once again my daughter has betrayed me. Just then, the king made an announcement. Whoever discovers my daughter will be rewarded with a portion of the kingdom. On the other hand, Princess Elizabeth and Eden eloped and started staying in a different kingdom. After a year, Princess Elizabeth gave birth to a lovely girl. Even her hand had the same birthmark as every other member of the royal family. Just like her mother, Eve, Elizabeth's daughter, was extremely beautiful. They had all taken on the life of a commoner in the kingdom and began to live happily ever after. Just like this, even Eve was now a grown-up. She too evolved into a fearless fighter as she grew older. In King Richard's kingdom, on the other hand, there was fear. There was a terrifying creature lurking in his land who would come every month and upset the villagers, taking their hens and lambs with him. King Richard said, Make an announcement. Whoever finds the monster will be rewarded handsomely. It's my promise. Many people tried their hardest, but none of them could compete with them. Just like that, the days passed. The villagers of the King Richard's kingdom were being tormented by this creature. And even the king was becoming worried. The money in his treasury was also draining away. One day, a young warrior named Ronald rode into the village of Elizabeth and Aidan on a stallion. The kingdom of King Richard appears to be very far away. It's time for me to rest for a while. They welcomed Ronald with open arms when he came to visit some ranchers. We have plant food, sir. They felt at ease because of Ronald's courteous and pleasant demeanor. He noticed that the entire field was covered in lovely flowers as he peered all around. In the midst of those flowers, he discovered Eve dancing. He fell in love with her at the very first sight. Many moons ago, there lived a boy named Sultan in Baghdad who had spent his childhood traveling far and near. His mom and dad passed away in his childhood and he had to struggle a lot to move ahead in his life. 
This is why he would get deeply saddened and when he would sit at the seashore for long hours. One day, he was sitting on the seashore and he was wishing that there was a miracle where he could become the richest man so that he didn't have to face the same poverty he had faced. He was tired of being a vagabond for scraps. Wandering this started praying to the God and then he sat down quietly at the seashore. After some time, he found a beautiful glass bottle coming towards him on the shore. That glass bottle was sealed with a cork and inside that bottle there was a paper on which something was written. As soon as Sultan opened the cork of the bottle, just then a genie came out of the bottle. Startled Sultan fell down on the ground. Just then the genie said, Your wish is my command. From this day onwards, I am at your service. I will be at your service till the last time, till the time I grant you three wishes. But make it sure, I can only grant you three wishes. After listening to Genie, Sultan understood that he is the master of his fate. Sultan realized that he had got the biggest miracle that he was wishing for. Is it so? So you are saying that you can grant my wishes? Yes, yes master, but I can only grant you three wishes. <laughs> Sultan then asked his very first wish. Alright, I want you to make me a house that is the finest of all in the entire world. And anyone who looks at my house remains stunned at its beauty. And this is my first wish. Right then, the genie started swirling in the air. And soon it looked like a tornado. Genie took Sultan away to a foreign land which was a beautiful place. And then he asked Sultan, Is this place good for your mansion master? What do you think? Genie took Sultan to such a place which was absolutely breathtaking. Seeing that place, Sultan said, I am just stunned by the beauty of this place. Yes, you can make a house here. As soon as Sultan said this, it started thundering all around the place. With a wink of an eye, a mansion started building in thin air. After some time, Sultan's mansion was completely ready. And once this was done, Genie reminded Sultan. Master, I have granted you the first wish. Now you are just left with two wishes. If you want, you can immediately wish for your next wishes. Are you ready for your next wish? <laughs> no, no, not now. I will think about it and then I will ask you to grant my wish. Now, Sultan had his own mansion in which he started living in luxury. Now he had servants, maids and even the great chefs to make him delicious food. Now Sultan started thinking what next must he wish from Genie. Pondering on the same, he started to walk towards the market. There he saw children who were extremely hungry and they were begging on the streets. Seeing those children, Sultan was reminded of his own childhood. There was a time when out of poverty he had to survive like these kids. That's why he got sad seeing them. He wanted to do something for them. He went back to palace and he told Genie, Hey Genie, I want you to grant my second wish. I need it now. Yes master, your wish is my command. Sultan asked his second wish from Genie. My second wish is that not a single child is left unfeed. They don't have to beg for food from others. Grant my wish. Genie heard Sultan's wish. Genie heard Sultan's second wish and granted it. Genie said to him, Master, your second wish is granted. Now you are left with only one wish. Do you want to ask for third wish right now? If you want, I can grant it now. No, no. No, I will think about my third wish as well. Now, Sultan was happy that he had his own mansion and even the children were not hungry anymore. Now, Sultan was reminded of his third and last wish. But 
he was also thinking that if he asks for a third wish then what will happen next will that genie go away or something else will happen now that sultan was thinking about this what was next just then he remembered there was a paper inside the bottle on which something was written he immediately started searching for his bottle everywhere just when he got his bottle he pulled out the paper and he began to read the letter any human being can ask for three wishes to be granted from genie but once after the third wish is granted that human being will be imprisoned in that bottle for eternity of his life and that genie will be set free sultan was scared for his life he begins to think what he will do next just then he came up with a plan he invoked the genie genie appeared right in front of his eyes and he asked your wish is my command master oh genie i want to fulfill my last wish the moment the genie heard this he couldn't contain his happiness Genie started to think that he will now be finally free from that suffocating bottle. Then Sultan asked for his third wish. Now the third wish is that you will be my slave for eternity and once I die you will go back in the bottle once again. And this is my last and final wish. On hearing this, Genie was screaming with anger, but he couldn't do anything. If he refused to do so, then he had to perish in the nine circles of hell. Satya's mother had just come out of a tragic incident. Her husband had died a few days ago. She needed to work to look after the household expenses. Now all her hopes were on her son Satya. Satya, till when are you not going to go to the school? You are losing on your studies. I'm not going to school, mom. I will not go to school with this hellish head. After the death of his father according to the rituals Satya had shaved his head and after that due to some weird reason his hair was not growing back son if not today then tomorrow slowly your new hair will surely grow don't be sad all this happened because of you neither would you have asked me to shave my head nor would i have been in this situation i'm not going anywhere Satya's mother was getting sad because of her son's behavior. She was blaming herself. The whole day Satya used to sleep with the blanket on his face. Oh god, please give some wisdom to my son. He's my only hope. One day Satya's mother was going to the market. Suddenly, going towards the school on the way, Satya's close friend Jagan appeared. Hello auntie, how are you? Hope you are good. I am fine son, but your friend Satya has created his own bad condition. I don't know what to do. Satya's mother told Jagan the whole condition of the house. Jagan started thinking. Oh, so that's why Satya is not coming to school. Okay auntie, I will come to your house tomorrow to meet him. I am leaving. Okay son, do come. Yesterday you had hair on your head. Yes aunty, but Satya should come to school. That's why I have shaved all my hair. Now no one will tease him in the school. Jagan, seeing this wise and loving behavior of Jagan, Satya and his mother had tears in their eyes. Satya hugs Jagan. Both of them happily leave for the school without wearing anything on their head. Who is she? She is the daughter of Elizabeth and Aiden. When Ronald looked closely at her, he noticed that she was glowing in the sunlight. 
Soon it was dark and the stars began to twinkle in the clear night sky. I think I must take my leave now. Just then Eden arrived. Who is that man? He is a knight who is set out on a mission. His name is Ronald. Ronald, where are you going? I need to see King Richard immediately. You must go right now. This jungle is not safe for night time travel. You are welcome to stay with us for the night. You are extremely kind, sir. Aiden, Eve and Roland had returned home. Eve was relaxing in the backyard. Roland also arrived at that very moment and sat down next to her. Eventually, they struck up a conversation. Roland eventually went inside and slept there. When Aiden looked into her room, she was nowhere to be found. Roland awoke as he heard her voice coming from outside the house. Roland was astonished when he realized that Eve had been attacked by a lion and was bravely defending herself. With their combined intelligence, they both killed the lion. Roland returned home with Eve on seeing them coming back home. Elizabeth and Eden finally sighed in relief. Thank you so much, Roland. Roland and Eve were now in deep love with each other. Why are you going to the kingdom of King Richard? To search and kill the monster and to bring peace to the people of that kingdom. Okay then, I too shall go with you. No, I will go there alone and I promise you that I will surely come back to you. My love, don't worry. No, I too will come with you. Roland had no choice but to bring Eve with him. Eve and Roland both set out towards King Richard's kingdom. They were able to hear the monster's terrifying howls. The monster emerged from his cave when he saw Roland and Eve. With a lot of bravado, Roland and Eve taught the monster a lesson, captured him and brought him before King Richard. King Richard was incredibly amazed. From the bottom of his heart, he expressed his gratitude to Roland and Eve. The king suddenly saw a birthmark on Eve's hand that looked just like his daughter's and he instantly recognized it. My lady, what is your name? Can you call your parents here? Yes, your majesty. My name is Eve, but my parents live in a different kingdom. Just then, the king ordered his soldiers to go to the other kingdom and bring back Elizabeth and Aidan with all due respect. The servants brought both of them back to the kingdom of King Richard. When he finally saw his daughter Elizabeth, he was overjoyed. Due to my ego and pride, I had built a wall so strong between us and that's why you had to stay away from me for so long. Our entire kingdom is freed. Now, King Richard crowned Eve as the queen of the kingdom. After a few days, Eve and Roland were married. Now their entire family started living happily ever after. Due to the bravery and intelligence of Roland, they brought many changes in the kingdom for the welfare of the people. Even the subjects of the kingdom were elated to see those changes. Three brothers lived in a village. Their names were Fred, Simon and Peter. Those three brothers came far away from home to Egypt as laborers. All three brothers were perceiving and kind. One day, the brothers were returning from their work, tired and as their luck would have it. As the time went on, it was getting dark. Cool breeze was blowing. Soon the forest hummed with the sounds from the fowls and animals. After walking for some distance, Peter made a tired face and said, I am really exhausted today. I really wish I had hit some hidden treasure. Can you imagine how luxurious life I could lead? Peter side-eyed at both of his brothers and said, Oh Lord! I am stuck with these losers for life. Just then, he notices something shimmering by the roadside. On seeing that, Peter exclaims, Oh dear Lord, you are so merciful. Brothers, look, that is the hidden treasure. Let's go. Both the brothers run behind Peter. And when they reach the place, they see something that blows their mind. Oh no, false alarm. But we should not lose our hope. The Lord will definitely answer our prayers. 
This is just a jar filled with fireflies. Seeing that jar lit with fireflies, Peter said to his brothers, "Let's go home. Maybe today is not our lucky day, but aren't these flies the cutest? Come on, let's go." Just as Peter ran away, two brothers chased him down the hill. As they reached their home, they freshened up and finally sat for their supper. They realized there wasn't enough food. Fred being the eldest gave the last two bread to each of his brothers. He went back to his bed empty stomach, but he couldn't sleep at all. He kept staring outside with his tired eyes and he thought, "Oh how I really wish we did hit a jackpot like Peter said. Then we don't have to sleep in our empty stomachs." He saw something shimmering outside. It was the jar of fireflies. He goes outside and opens the cork. And he thought, "It is such a shame to trap such fireflies in a jar. They are meant to be free, not to be brutally caged." I should get going. I have a lot of work to do in the morning. Just as Fred was going back, a blinding light appeared right behind him. As he was trying to turn around and look at its source, suddenly the blinding light turned into a beautiful fairy. The fairy bestowed a gift to Fred. for releasing her from the jar fred this is a tribute for releasing me from that jar i'm really thankful to you from the bottom of my heart you three brothers are indeed kind honest and diligent use my gift judiciously whenever you need it and just like that the light vanishes in thin air and something drops to the ground it was a wooden ball fred casts a spell just as the fairy directed Something magical happens. The wooden ball turns into a table. It was loaded with all kind of food he could have ever imagined. He was elated. He finally ate to his fill. He hit the ball under his pillow and finally Fred could sleep peacefully. But oh no, two thieves broke into his house. They stole every hard-earned penny they could lay their hands on and ran away. Next morning, when soft sunlight brushes against Fred's face, just then he woke up. And as he looks around his house, he finds that their house was plundered clean. Fred wakes Simon up in a frenzy. Simon, wake up. Wake up quickly. Just look around. See what has happened. On one hand, Fred and Simon were horrified and thought, "What are we going to do now?" On the other hand, Peter was snoring away in a deep sleep. Peter, wake up. We are doomed. These thieves took away everything. How can you sleep so peacefully? Now, the three brothers felt that they were out of their options, so they had to return to their village. They went back to work and informed their respective masters about the theft and bid them goodbye before leaving for their village. Simon worked in a mill. When he said everything to his master, then his master said to him, "You are a dedicated and scrupulous young man. Just wait for me till I am back. I want to give you a present." Just then, the master comes back with a pouch in his hand. Before he could say anything, his master starts to demonstrate something. He showed him how he murmured a spell and jiggled the pouch. and suddenly the bag was filled with gold coins simon was stupefied and numb his master then handed him over that magical pouch simon with his trembling hands he said m m master i can't take this gift master lightly pats on his shoulder and said dear simon you earned it with your honesty and diligence use this whenever you need it Simon sighed in relief and he happily set out to go back to his home. Fred showed Simon his magical wooden ball and Simon his magical pouch. Then they finally set out back to their village. Through the woods they find a nice cozy place under a huge tree where Fred turns his magical ball into a table. After they ate they slept peacefully. A mugger saw everything from the branch above them. As soon as both the brothers were sound asleep, 
The mugger gets down from the branch and he steals the magical bag and the magical ball and runs away. Just as the sunlight dimmed, both the brothers woke up from their slumber, only to find that even their magical pouch and ball were stolen. They started cursing their stars and left. On the other hand, Peter bid his mistress and his dear animals goodbye and left for his home. Peter works in a sanctuary as a keeper. Peter was lost in his own world, humming and enjoying the cool evening breeze. Just then, he felt something near his feet, as if someone was pulling his breeches. Peter turned around to find a little tail wagging. It was a tiny puppy that was nibbling at his breeches and hanging from it. Peter felt pity for the small pup and took out a piece of bread and offered it to him. Peter took the dog with him and decided to name him Pearl. At a distance, he finds a man holding a pouch as if he was running away from something. He was coming towards Peter and just then, Pearl pounced on him. In the frenzy, the man left the pouch and ran away. Oh no, Pearl, that's not right. What happened to you, huh? Hmm, it seems like you are as naughty as me. Peter picks up Pearl in his arms and he calls the man from behind. Hey brother, I guess you left behind your things. But the man was already far away. Well, who would not love things that come free? In this case, it was our very dear Peter, who always dreamt of getting some hidden treasure. As expected, Peter took the bag and found a ball inside it. Oh wow Pearl, look what we found, a ball. Okay, let's go and we all will play with it. Saying that, Peter and Pearl reach home. Pearl jumps from his arms and starts running all around the house. Peter takes out that wooden ball and gently throws it towards him. Then he starts calling his parents out. Mommy, Daddy, look, I came back home and see who I brought along with me. Hearing his voice, his parents came to him and on seeing him, his mother affectionately said, Oh my darling, I'm so happy to see you all together after so long. Oh, look, how cute Pearl is. Okay, come inside. Let's have dinner together. As everyone sits down to have their supper, Pearl throws a wooden ball and it comes rolling towards Fred. As Fred picks up the ball, he starts wandering and just then his father asked him, Are you thinking something Fred? Is there anything wrong with the ball? Hmm? Dad, I think it's the same magical ball. Meanwhile, Simon recognizes the pouch lying in front of him from before. He is overjoyed to see that pouch, so much so that he hugs Peter and he said, Where did you find this bag? I am so glad that for the first time in your life, you did an amazing job. Peter gently pulls away from his hug and he says, Alright, alright, but tell me first, why are you guys so elated to see my things? After all, I got these things from the woods. It's then that Fred and Simon narrated the entire story to Peter and their parents about the magical ball and the magical pouch. Hearing the entire story, Peter and his parents were astounded. They all were elated and prayed to the Lord for such blessings. No explanation is needed when you have a magic ball and a magic pouch in your life. Your life is just like a bed of roses. If we continue to work diligently in this way, then no matter how tough the situation may arise in our lives, we can always overcome it. You will get your reward just like these two brothers got theirs.